Hello you guys, welcome back to another episode of Dion0026 Jika D. So this is a 25 gallon lagoon, as you know we're going all SPS dominant inside of this tank. I'm setting myself up for a very much challenge. But today's episode, we're basically going to go over and look at some of the essentials that I use to test the parameters. Not only is it cool to have corals, it's cool to test your parameters so you can know what is going on inside of your husband tree, your tank. It is very essential to have test kits and monitor those parameters for those particular corals that you keep. Hence, knowing is half the battle. Also, if you don't dose, if you don't test it, then you don't dose it. That is a very important rule inside of the uh, saltwater hobby that I have learned. So, I'm gonna look like I wanna start dosing some potassium uh, nitrate. So, I need to dose, I need to see what my nitrate says. I'm also looking to use some two part ESV uh, alkalinity and calcium dosing. Not needing these things now, but in the future. So, I need to be able to test these things and see where it drops, where it rises, how much is the tank assuming. So in this video, it's gonna be a short, I'm going over the calcium HANA checker, I'm going over the phosphate HANA checker, I'm also going over the alkalinity HANA checker, that I'll be using the Salifer Magnesium test kit. And I will also be using a refractometer to check my salinity. These are all basic essentials that you need to have for your tank. You need a refractometer so you can check your salinity. You need to know where your gravity is at. Especially if you're keeping a reef tank, you want your salinity to be stable. You need to know where your alkalinity is. Your alkalinity is definitely something that's very important to the growth of your corals. You need to know where your calcium is. Your calcium and carbonates that build a stony structure for the corals itself. You need to know where your phosphates is at because that's how you can manage your algae problems. You're going through a little bit of algae problems and stuff. Not diatome, this new tank syndrome. I'm talking like algae, afro stuff. That's going on inside of the aquarium. So basically in this video, we'll be going over those. I'll be brushing kind of fast. I do want to add that I do like the HANA alkalinity and the calcium and the phosphate checkers. I believe it's a breeze. I've used API and Salifer, and I think those of the HANA instruments are best for me. Although, hence I would like to add the fact that I did have to use distilled water. That distilled, deionized water, that's a reagent that I bought from Amazon. This gallon was about $20, no lie. But I swear it's well worth it because it helps me get a more accurate test when I'm doing the calcium. Yes, I do have an RODI unit, but no, that thing fluctuates. I don't know why. My TDS meter is zero. I mean, it's brand new. It's good. I know it's fine. But I don't know what additives is else is inside of the water that comes out of my um, water uh, faucet. But with this deionized water, that special lab water, it gives me the assurance of definitely it's deionized water that they made it the way that it's supposed to be without any additives or, you know. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive in this video, man. I hope y'all enjoy. Y'all get to see some results. I also want to say it's important to keep a track. I will be showing you that I'm popping out my chart here. Like, so far, we got the salinity at 0.26. A little 2.7 maybe. My alkalinity is 8.9. I like a high alk. I use a high alk salt. I am doing SPS. Uh, calcium at 4.93. And my phosphate is low phosphate is 0.55. So that's not even giving me one phosphate. You can go up to five phosphates, I believe. So I have very low phosphates. And I'm basing this off of Saturdays. Well, I just did a little quick one on Saturday. I, some days I do slip, but, you know, I like to space it out two, three days. But my Saturday was at, uh, last Saturday was a 0 0.028, my uh, alkalinity was at 8.6, and my calcium was at 481. You see how that's basically kind of consistent, it's in the same grade. And mind you, I did do a water change yesterday, so it's kind of hitting on the money, you know, so it's good to keep track of seeing what's going on and everything like that. Well, let's dive into the video, y'all. Thanks for watching. Um, this is the tank. We do have the T5 Hybrid Aqualife 1 running with the Hydro 25. Sorry, Hydro 26. This is the 25 gallon lagoon with the HOB 1.5 Aquamax Protein Skimmer with a current USA Wave Eflux system of the 660s doing gyro move back and forth. Um, there you have it, you guys. Let's get into the video. So here's a voiceover, you guys. I'm basically showing you the essentials that I'm using. Uh, the Hannah Checkers, the whole collection. Basically, well, most of the collection. Refractometer, the magnesium, and uh, I'll get very good accurate readings from this. You know, nothing's very accurate, but this gives me uh, accurate enough to keep what I think is stable and ideal of where my parameters are fluctuating and dropping that. In this video, I'm just going to be going over uh, a quick run through of my charting, the equipment that I'm using to test, and pretty much doing it 
fast because I know you don't want to sit there through the whole time period to be doing it. But this is basically how it looks to test your aquarium. Knowing is half the battle. Knowing when to intervene with your tank, knowing when to stay out of your tank is very important because you don't want to overdo anything. And again, if you don't test it, you don't dose it. You don't know what it is, so you do not need to dose it. Me, I am looking for my parameters fluctuation. I'm looking for when my parameters are uh, stable. Here is the, the clip video of my tank.